Well, I'm really excited to be here today to introduce our uh, new uh, head baseball coach at Indiana University, Chris Limonis. Um, you know, we, uh, we uh, had an unexpected search, but a very quality search, and was really pleased with the uh, outpouring of interest we had for this job. We had a number of top quality uh, assistants from existing programs. We had a number of head coaches at existing uh, collegiate programs. We actually had a number of people in the professional ranks express interest in this job. Um, but Chris uh, quickly rose to the top of our uh, target list for, for a variety of, of reasons. Um, he's been very successful everywhere he's been, the Citadel and uh, Louisville, multiple regionals, multiple super regionals, multiple college world uh, series. Um, he's produced a, a lot of, uh, helped produce a lot of great um, players um, from our region, has a great um, recruiting base, which also happens to be in our region in Indiana and Chicago land and, and environs. Noted as a uh, great recruiter, great uh, hitting coach, and just a quality person. And um, when uh, when you when you enter into one of these things, you, you look for fit, um, and you look for someone who will represent your university well. And uh, the relationships that um, that uh, Chris has, has developed um, really uh, speak well of, of the way uh, he was. He, he will build this program and and keep us going um, in the in the right direction. I want to thank everybody who was involved in the search. I especially want to thank Scott Rowland, um, who uh, was uh, instrumental in helping us get behind the scenes. And I think there was a substantial amount, very, maybe more due diligence in this search than anyone in which I've been involved. And, and again, uh, 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 Chris's uh, his reputation among people, uh, among baseball people that Scott was able to, um, to uh, discuss uh, really uh, kept him at the top of our list. I also want to thank um, Kyle Hart from the baseball team, who was a member of the of the advisory committee on the search committee, it was uh, ironic in, in a way that I think just a couple days before um, uh, this search occurred, we had announced our student athlete bill of rights, which committed to uh, have student athletes involved in these in these searches, and so that was a quick um, implementation of uh, that provision of the student athlete bill of rights. Uh, in terms of business, uh, we have uh, finalized our contract uh, with Chris. Chris will make an annual salary starting at $250,000. That'll make him the second highest paid uh, head baseball coach in the Big Ten. And I think that's reflective of our continuing commitment uh, to provide the resources necessary to, to keep IU baseball um, at, the top of the, at the top of the heap. Um, it'll be a five-year contract too, so an extended contract to, to give Chris the time to put his imprint on the program. Um, so without any further ado, I will call for the right-hander and, uh, and uh, ask Chris to, uh, to say a few words and have a little presentation uh, at the end of, at the, end of the uh, program. <clears throat> First of all, I just want to say thank you. It's a blessing to be here. And, and the process, as somebody going through the process, I think it took about four or five days. And that was the nice part about it. And joining campus and coming in here and meeting everybody, I'd, I'd known Indiana baseball just from playing them and being in the other dugout. But getting inside and meeting both the Scots and, and Fred and everybody else, it had a different feel than a lot of different places I'd been. And it was, um, I always knew it was a great baseball school the last couple of years. I just didn't know inside the student athletes, the commitment to the student and everything else. Um, I'm excited to take over. Tracy Smith did an unbelievable job here. And so um, I've, always, I've told everybody and I've told recruits, I'd much rather take over a place that's at the top than at the bottom. And so we got a whole clubhouse full of winners. It was what I feel like with that group. Um, you always got to be careful what you wish for because I've sat in the other dugout and wished Kyle Schwarber was gone for years and now I wish he was in our dugout still, <laughs> you know, type of thing. But um, it's a great group of kids coming back. We're excited. Uh, we feel like we'll be at the top of the league. Um, I've had a chance to hire some unbelievable assistants. They're not here today because they're recruiting, and uh, they're out trying to find the next great Hoosier. But it's a, it's a fun time, and we're really excited uh, to be here. Excellent. Be happy to take uh, any questions. Don't have to have any, but be happy to have some. Pete. Great. Great. Recruiting and having great players. And I think one thing, because I've had a history of eight years of playing IU, um, 
it's pitching and defense. That's what I think everybody looked at three big hitters, but I think we were seventh in the country last year in pitching, and we played unbelievable defense, or they played unbelievable defense, but us, us now have been telling recruits, uh, you know, yeah, we beat Louisville, you know, six <laughs> out of seven times. So I've, uh, I've jumped on that side already when I'm talking to recruits, but because we're, we're competing in this part of the country for kids, but we're going to pitch and play defense, and that's the key, and try to recruit the best kids in this part of the country. It's been, it's been great. We've, um, one of the hardest parts about recruiting here is we've been to Indianapolis a couple times. It's hard to focus because we've had so many IU people coming up. All my assistants have said it all, all day long. Everybody's talking to you and welcoming you, but the kids themselves have been great, especially the younger ones. We've kind of jumped in a little late, so the rising senior class, a lot of kids are signed, but a lot of the young ones are, are excited, and we already got them lined up for football games in the fall and, and everything else. And I, I think that culture, that's one of the big things we're trying to change is we want the kid that grows up and is dying to be a Hoosier. That's what we're trying to work for here. We've been swimming. I can, it's been, a, it's been a, a fast three weeks, which we've loved it. We've enjoyed it. It's easy to get up every day and go. Uh, today's the first day in nine days we haven't had a recruit on campus. So we've had kids coming in and visiting and showing them off the campus. My, my first group, they were IU grads, and so they were telling me, Coach, turn left, turn right, kind of working me through campus. But it's just been a lot of recruiting and trying to – to get everything lined up here with the, the previous team. There's such a veteran previous team. We've tried to build relationships there. And then on the other side, trying to get everybody coming in. What's that in terms of just dealing with a veteran team? I guess, what have they told you, uh, I guess, about themselves? I guess, you know, what's been your, your kind of general read on them? What, what have they kind of told you about what's worked here? Kyle Hart told me on the interview, he just said, Coach, we want to win now. And so I, I shook my head and I said, I understand. And so that's been the biggest side is it's a group of kids that they want to continue the success. And that's what we've talked about is just it's going to be a different coaching staff, but the goal's still the same. I know Tracy was very motivated to win and win the right way, and our group's going to be the same. It, being new, there's going to be some changes in there, but the reality is we all want to win. And I think it's uh, – when you have a group of guys that know how to win, it's hard to um, it's hard to beat them. You know, they just are, I'm sure our group thinks they're the best team in the Big Ten, and they should. And it's, they're going to play that way, you know, and through the end of the year. What did he tell you? I guess what did, what did the players? I guess tell you about what they wanted. Um, well. They also emphasized they're ready to win, wanted to win now. They were looking for a proven winner, somebody could step right in and, and, and keep the program at an elite level. And we really felt like uh, uh, that was check, check, check with, with Chris. Um, he was the national assistant coach of the year. He's with a well-regarded program, a highly regarded head coach, a great coaching tree. Um, someone who uh, had passed on opportunities that he could have explored but didn't think that was the right step. Um, for him, so so uh, uh, they were looking for a real quality person that they could get behind and feel like he's a been there, done that guy, and, and uh, that's who we think we got. It is because normally in a, in a, when you're in a coaching search, it's because the last coach didn't work out so well. Um, and that's the coaching searches I've been involved in to this point, but here's one where we had a wildly successful coach, and as Chris said, you know, uh, winning breeds winning, and that, 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 that we're going to win um, attitude um, gives you such an advantage before you even get started. And they, and they brought that to the search and had a lot of confidence in what um, they were looking for. So I think that was a real positive part of this. Zach, did you have? Yeah, sorry. Sure. I guess for, for Fred, for you, and then Coach, for you as well, both just the five year contract, the commitment. For, I know you talked about giving Tracy that kind of commitment a few years ago. How important was it for you? to carry that forward as you hired his replacement and coach. Sort of, I guess, the second question, how important was it for you to see that kind of commitment, not just the, the size of the contract, but the length of the thing, too? Yeah, I just thought a, a, a multi-year contract made sense given our general commitment to baseball. I uh, wanted Chris to feel like, you know, he could continue to keep it going in the right way and not, not be looking over his shoulder. And frankly, someone who's, who succeeded in the way that, that Chris has, uh, I think uh, deserves um, that kind of stability going in. So that that was something that we put on the table immediately and didn't have to, you know, have negotiated from us. That was that was our initiative. From the coaching side, it's it's once again I go back to recruiting and kids knowing they're you're committed there and 
um, how long are you going to be there? I've already gotten, how long are you going to be there? And that's, you know, it's lifetime is what your, your hope is. And so, but, you know, kids know all those different things and that's something you fight just in that world. And just, it is, it's a comfort to know, Hey, we can get in here and do it the right way. And, and eventually with this team, we'll lose a lot of seniors and upperclassmen this year that, you know, pretty soon it'll be a big new group of kids that are coming in and, and feel like you can do it with your guys. We're looking for an athletic, powerful guy. I know that sounds a little crazy, but um, last year we led the country and we stolen bases, so we had a lot of athletes that played and because it helped so much on defense. But uh, a couple years prior to that, one of our first teams, we had 80 home runs and over 100-something stolen bases. So we, we like to have the ability to do it all. And so if you can find some bigger – I like bigger athletes. I like uh, guys who can run and move and try to get some guys – that can do a little bit of everything. We got to be able to win on Friday night, three to two, and maybe on Sunday we got to win ten to seven. So I'd like to be able to do it, you know, a little bit of both ways and try to be blended there. Our system's always kind of had that that we've worked out of from an offensive side. Pitching wise, I like the and my pitching coach. That was one of the reasons he came. Is I like we like big bodies, some velo. Not that we won't have some different type of guys, but he's had a lot of success with some big body Midwestern kids. He had Lance Lynn at Ole Miss and some different guys like that that he's had a lot of success with. Chris just described my athletic package too bad I don't have <laughs> We feel like we can recruit anywhere, but we're really going to probably make a more concentrated effort in Indiana, Illinois. Chicago's been a big area for me over in the past, and we have a lot of contacts there. And I think half the school seems like they're from Chicago. There's a lot of kids down here going, so we feel like that's a big basis. But we're really number one, two, and three. We're trying to really attack the state of Indiana. And we're really trying to the, – the state here has is, is got great players everywhere, and we'd like to get a couple more guys to play here. Well, the first guy I met was Kyle Hart, so that was that was definitely one. And then I, I think we were walking around. We met Will Nolden, which I almost cut Will the first day because he knows it. Because he, I was coaching third in Omaha, and he threw out our guy by like six feet, and I had to <laughs> put my head down and go back to the dugout. So I gave Will a hard time and said, you know, you may not have a spot here. But um, and then Scott Donnelly was one that we spoke a lot with that in the process that I thought talking to him and feeling him out, but. A lot of guys were in town for camp, so we had a chance to meet a lot of the guys and sit down and talk, some of the freshmen and also some of the older guys. But um, I would say those handful of guys. Ryan Halstead's a kid we've had multiple conversations with, and, and I've tried to let my assistant coaches, you know, call them here and, and try to touch base so we can – we're really working hard in that area of relationship, just trying to make sure we all kind of know each other before we start. What all you'll control, will you still coach third? You know, what, how much will you want to control from the dugout? How much will you leave to assistance? Or is that something you maybe just haven't thought a ton about? Well, I hired a pitching coach. So Kyle Bunnell run 95% of the pitch, and obviously we'll always talk about it, but I, he's a real experienced guy, and I felt like I could lean on him in that way and, and call him pitches. Uh, from the offensive side, I'll be more the, I guess, the offensive coach. I, I brought with me another guy, uh, Kyle Cheesebro who is uh, more of a hitting guy, the, the hitting uh, swing mechanics, different things like that, sitting in the cages with guys. But we'll, um, I'll run the offense from that side. I'll probably do it from the dugout and let my young assistants coach the bases. But, um, and then defensively, I'll do all the team defense type of stuff. I, I told Fred and I told Scott, I was amazed because we played at Simbauer Field and there weren't many fans and all of a sudden, Usually it takes time to build a fan base. And as soon as Bart Kaufman Phil went up, it was full. And it's amazing. I walk, one of the things I'm doing right now with the recruits is walking them around. And I don't know if you've been inside the clubhouse, but there's all those great picks of the stadium is maxed out. And so that's the big sell that we've been selling is you're going to play in front of a lot of people. And it's, uh, that's been exciting. I would like to extend a who's your welcome to Chris and, and be the first one to provide him his first jersey, so Chris, welcome to Indiana. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you, Thank you, Thanks for coming, everybody. Appreciate it.